Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we are live. Hello and welcome to Interlagos. It is time for round nine of the Midwest Formula One Division Three Championship, and we are here at the Brazilian Grand Prix. It is a very high speed, high uh, high skill circuit here in Interlagos here at the Brazilian Grand Prix. The drivers are ready for it. I'm ready for it, and I hope you're all ready for it here as well, watching from home wherever you are hello and welcome everybody thank you for joining in my name is fallen monkeys here in the commentators booth once again to take you through the action as we are just getting ready for our short qualifying session we've got drivers hitting the track and it is snooker ml who is leading the way here in that mclaren on the out lap on this very cloudy afternoon saturday afternoon so to say in the f1 2020 universe as uh, we are kicking off our short qualifying here and uh, it's going to be a good one here around uh, around the Brazilian Grand Prix here in uh, Interlagos it is a bit of a fan favorite track I've said it before from some other tracks but I do really enjoy to commentate this track I really enjoy racing this track as well it is uh, a fan favorite track here for both drivers and spectators alike and uh, we will see why here very shortly it's a very quick track, high pace, high speed, uh, not too, too many corners here from, you can, from what you can see. Sector 2 is definitely the, uh, the most troublesome section of them all, but not to take anything away from sectors 1 and 3. But let's ride on board with the snooker, completes the outlap, heading down towards turn 1. The Senna S is here of turns 1, 2, and 3. You can see... Gotta quickly get on the power to set yourself up for this very long straight. Might get a little bit of help from uh, from the Williams leaving the pits there in front of him. A little bit of a toe from Jay Stee into turn four. You can see riding the curbs here for turns four and turn five. Very easy to lose the car if you're not careful through there. Now into the more technical portion of the circuit. Watch the exit curb there. Very easy to lose the car once again. Now this is a very low speed corners here. Uh, you want to get on the power as quick as possible through this section of the circuit. But through the, uh, the corner we just passed and this one here as well, it is very easy to lose the car. Quickly on the power, up the gears through the sweeping left-hander. On the brakes here, almost home free through this left-hander. Now, you don't need to let go of the acceleration pedal for the rest of the lap. A slight left kink, a little bit tricky in the wets, but here in the dries, no issues towards the line you go you can hug that inside uh, you can hug that inside line there heading towards the start finish straight to uh, to maximize uh, your time maximize the uh, take the shortest line to the line so to say but for snooker it's a 108 9 to kick things off here in qualifying uh, very quickly beaten by k dog who went around a little bit further behind a 108.3 is the time to beat so you can see very early on how quickly these lap times are already in the sub 110s into the 108s here and the low 108s as uh, I'm seeing on the uh, the screen as we're riding on board with its heavy team B7 racing in the Red Bull is uh, not participating in qualifying right now retires very early on will be starting from the back as its heavy crosses the line and brings his Ferrari up to a 108.133 good enough for provisional pole position here here around uh, around Interlago still 14 minutes to go in this session and it looks like uh, there is a, um, uh, a McLaren who's bringing out a yellow flag that's Snooker after setting his lap having a little bit of a moment here uh, through the uh, what I can essentially call the penultimate corner the uh, the true penultimate corner of this circuit uh, right at the start of sector three getting back on track now nothing wrong with uh, nothing uh, nothing to worry about too too much I should say but uh, it shows the difficulty of this track around the corners you want to get on the power as quick as you possibly can like I've said before and uh, this is um, one of those circuits that it can really bite you if you're not careful here as uh, Chunky Corgi crossing the line it's a 109 flat putting himself just ahead of uh, pork chops uh, rounding out the top 10 and uh, a big uh, margin at that chunky Korg with a 109 flat pork chops with a 109.6 if i'm reading my timing table right 
and um, it does go down from there, but the times will speed up as this session plays out here today. Crestier T in the racing point, heading around the uh, the final few corners, opening up that DRS flap, heading towards the line, getting himself set up, and we'll see what the time he can uh, he can put on the board is to kick things off. It's a uh, 12 fastest, a 110. 0.151 that's good enough for p12 like i said not a bad lap time but i'm sure there's more in the tank here for a crustier t as uh, qualifying is going to continue to tick down now let's take a look here as uh, c freeman has an invalidation and that will be bringing up a uh, a good talking point here as the uh, track limits are going to be uh, definitely a, uh, a challenge for a lot of the drivers. You're trying to extend the track limits as much as you can and you're going very wide on the exit to maximize your exit speed but um, uh, especially here in the F1 2020 video game they can, uh, can definitely come and bite you if you're not careful. You see a lot of penalties for uh, extending track limits here around the track and uh, furthermore I'm uh, getting a little bit of indication here, especially for the race, that uh, it's going to be even more so of a challenge, not just for track limits, but uh, these clouds are here to stay, and if anything, we'll be getting much worse as uh, as this, uh, this evening moves along here. We are going to have a full wet race, at least to start the race, according to my uh, in-house weather reports. So uh, the clouds are here to stay. We are not left guessing like we have been previously. It looks like it's going to be full wets to start. And um, if we end up lasting, maybe possibly near the end of the race, we could see the rain let up to uh, allow us to, uh, to see maybe a set of intermediate tires. But no chance of uh, dry running here. And uh, this is probably why you're seeing all these drivers so far uh, getting their time set on the uh, on the soft tires here now uh, pork chops and a uh, wild meta they have their times uh with the uh, with the medium tires so far just getting a couple reps in but to expect them to put on a set of soft tires pocket rocket as well for that matter on the medium tires with his best lap time but uh, like i'm saying with the uh, with the wet weather that we have incoming here expect a lot of these drivers to uh, to put on a set of soft tires before the end of the session if um, uh, if they want to go fast this which will be the optimal strategy given that uh, at least from uh, from our indication the uh, the dry tires really won't matter for the race as uh, we are going to be in full wet conditions possibly intermediates near the end of the race if drivers want to take a gamble but um, it looks like the rain will only let up in 45 minutes time from the start of the race so that uh, very well could be uh, could be a possibility but maybe not as likely as uh, we would think as the uh, highways is on an out lap Kaz his teammate of, uh, of highways starting a flying lap right now and uh, I'll be honest um, uh, we'll see what Kaz can do here today but um, I feel as though Kaz might be a little bit distracted on this uh, on this Thursday evening here as uh, his uh, his Montreal Canadien are uh, currently playing and eyeing a chance to make the Stanley Cup Finals and uh, that is a, a game I was watching myself maybe not as much on the line for me as there is for Kaz as uh, I do know Kaz is a, a very big uh, habitant fan uh, so to say from what I can see in the discord but uh, it's not going to stop him from hitting the track here around Interlagos I'm sure he's got his engineer on the radio uh, filling him in with all of the updates when uh, when needed here and uh, we'll uh, we'll see how that goes out. Setting a purple sector too, though. So uh, definitely not getting distracted too too much by that. Heading towards the line. Let's see what the lap time is going to be for Kaz as his first time here around the uh, around the track towards the line. Quickest line, and that's sixth fastest. It's a 108.5 for the Alfa Romeo driver here. So uh, very good lap time here. Puts him uh, just outside of the top five. Uh, does get immediately knocked down um, uh, by another driver who just crossed the uh, crossed the line, and a couple more crossed the line for that matter too. That uh, might have been uh, no, not it's heavy. I know uh, Exareska set a lap time not too long ago, and I believe uh, that might have been Grumpy Old Catman 
in the uh, Mercedes who set a uh, quicker lap time. We're starting to break into the low 108s as uh, more drivers are getting their lap time set. Pocket Rocket looks to be on a lap right now, uh, looking uh, very much so. He's had the pace here, uh, has Pocket Rocket. He's just needed the consistency. And uh, here today, looking to, uh, I'm sure he's looking to uh, make up for uh, what was a very disappointing uh, Australian Grand Prix for him after having such a good qualifying, a good race, a lot of battles uh, through, uh, through the Australian Grand Prix. But unfortunately, it was all for naught as there was a crash out. But uh, looking to make up for that here today, snag some points. He is on that uh, brand spanking new PlayStation 5 from his end. So uh, some new tools in the in the toolbox for uh, Pocket Rocket. And look at that, really putting them to work. Blows by the time set by It's Heavy here with seven minutes to go in qualifying. It's a 107.5, five tenths, half a second quicker than the, than the second fastest driver of It's Heavy here as the qualifying is ticking down here and Pocket Rocket in the house hanging on to that provisional pole position after just getting it here today. Now, looking at the timing tables, every driver currently has a time on the board ranging between uh, essentially the uh, the 107s to the uh, the mid 110s here, uh, but essentially right around the 108s to 109s, so uh, about a second, maybe two, separating most of the grid. Other than TNE Highways, who seems to be having uh, possibly some issues with uh, track limits uh, so far here in qualifying, uh, we'll keep an eye out on him. Let's actually take a look here, and uh, that's another invalidated lap for highways as uh, he's on two lap old soft tires no time on the board and this time uh, will not count either way so uh, I think for highways he might just want to dive into the pits put on a fresh set of boots try again but he's gonna have to look at the data possibly with the uh, possibly look at that with his engineer figure out uh, where he's uh, where he's extending too much where he can and can't extend to get that clean lap in between now and the end of the session because uh, down to 5 minutes and 45 seconds to go and counting here in this short qualifying session. And with no time on the board, especially here around Interlagos, a very high-speed circuit in the wet of all, uh, of all times, too, for the race. Going to be very difficult to work your way up the grid as uh, Crustier T on your screen sets uh, essentially an identical lap here on his uh, second lap around three one hundredths of a second slower if I'm going to be precise here uh, so he will not improve remains in uh, 15th position here so far and uh, we'll switch back over to the Ferrari of its heavy on a flying lap right now currently in second but we'll see if he can improve on that near 108 flat he and uh, Exaresca have a uh, very similar time. It's a 108.029 for the moment for It's Heavy. Exaresca in the Red Bull, meanwhile, with a 108.053. So um, very, very close. But with It's Heavy coming around the final few corners now, we'll see what kind of time he's going to put up. Will he be able to improve on this second time around? Uh, taking a very quick line to the line there, looking like he was going to dive into the pits. He does go nearly identical once again six one thousandths of a second slower than his uh, previous lap time so no improvement but it was close it was uh, a game of uh, thousands of a second there for uh, it's heavy but no improvement he remains in p2 and pocket rocket can breathe maybe just a little bit easier for the time being as uh, he will still be hanging on to that provisional pole position but We've got a lot of drivers hungry to try to get that right now from him as uh, the track is uh, getting quicker. The drivers are getting quicker. They're getting into that groove. Grumpy old Catman thought he was uh, going to be on a flying lap, but um, shuts off his ERS looking to conserve, so will not be uh, completing that lap. Uh, it's heavy on an in-lap, unsurprisingly. His teammate, though, Houdini, he's on a, uh, a flying lap right now, heading down towards turn four. You can see the number 13 for Ferrari on your screen going a little bit uh, a little bit wide on the uh, exit of turn four but that's exactly how you want to take that not too too wide to invalidate but just wide enough to maximize your exit speed 
through into sector two. A little bit of a lock up there for him. As you can see him heading through the lap. You saw that smoke coming out of the tires. So that uh, might affect the tire wear a tiny little bit for the rest of the lap. Possibly another one there for him as he's uh, trying to get that car slowed down as quick as possible. Slow in, fast out. And actually, he's not happy with his lap time. He is inval uh, not invalidated, but he has abandoned his, uh, his lap here. And uh, he's going to try again. It seems he's going to go around one more time. And I do like that idea from him. As uh, with 2 minutes and 40 seconds to go. He could have dove into the pits and set one more, uh, one more lap afterwards. But it would have been very, very close. And uh, possibly, uh, possibly missed out on that final lap. Especially with it's heavy in the pits right now. Probably looking to leave the, uh, the pit lane sooner rather than later. To get one more lap time in before the end of the this qualifying session but uh, we've got Exareska on your screen right now as uh, he is uh, heading on a flying lap or not heading on a flying lap he is on a flying lap for the Red Bull uh, taking over that seat for uh, young DJ CJ I should say um, uh, Team B7 Racing is also in the uh, the Red Bull for VTech up from division uh, up from division four from uh, from what my sources are telling me not missing a beat whatsoever here around uh, Interlagos is Exareska looking to snag a lot of uh, a lot of points here for his own drivers championship as well as for the uh, the Red Bull constructors here and uh, we'll see how it'll look like as he's heading towards the line taking that wide line to the line and it's uh, nine one hundredths of a second slower than his uh, best lap time so once again pocket rocket can breathe a sigh of relief as uh, both it's heavy and Exareska went a little bit slower and now Exareska has has the uh, the disadvantage of being on slightly more worn tires for this next lap but um, that was uh, oh a little bit of an interesting uh, racing point getting out of the way Houdini heading towards the line but uh, he's not going to improve from what I saw in that sector two time that's the end of his qualifying grumpy old Catman. he's got a minute to go heading around um, the uh, heading around the track no ERS open that might be the end of his qualifying as he's on uh, a uh, couple uh, lap old soft tires and as predicted everybody here so far is uh, on the soft tires to uh, end the session capital diving into the pits uh, chunky corgi on an out lap i think getting those tires set up and ready to go but let's take a look at the uh, the big powerhouses here it's heavy and crucially it's heavy has an invalidation on uh, what is his final lap here around the circuit for qualifying so heartbreak for it's heavy as he will not be able to challenge for pole position uh, meanwhile pocket rocket we'll see if he's going to improve on his time but he's uh, slowing up just a little bit here as i think he's getting himself set up to possibly defend if he feels he needs to uh heading around the final corner now we'll keep an eye out on that but i'm not too sure if he's going to want to go around he can't go around i think he knows that uh, barring anybody else um uh, he's got that pole position all but done with highways is done with his qualifying grumpy old catman has that invalid Chunky Corgi, though, he's on a flying lap, slower in Sector 1, but uh, we'll see if he can find this time in Sector 2 um, uh, here on this final lap here for him as uh, the top two dive into the pits. I'm sure uh, Highways will uh, follow suit. Meta has an invalidated lap. See Freeman, he's currently on a lap right now, heading down through Sector 2, a little bit uh, a little bit further behind the uh, the likes of uh, Chunky Corgi, who's heading towards the final corner. So it looks like it's uh, coming down to these two drivers here. Uh, Chunky Corgi heading towards the line in that McLaren. Is he going to improve? Yes, he does. Up to P8, so a top 10 finish here in qualifying for Chunky Corgi. Now the question is, is where will C. Freeman end up here on the end of his lap? And I don't think it's going to be an improvement. Definitely not going to be an improvement for him here today. Or this time around, I should say. As um, he is going to head into the pit lane here. And uh, it looks like as if um, uh, that was uh, possibly Highways. Uh, looking to maybe overtake in the pit lane. Slowing down, being, uh, being alert and aware. And uh, that is just about going to do it here for qualifying. As soon as the drivers uh, get towed into their respective pit boxes, that will be the end of qualifying session. So by nearly half a second, just about, it is the Haas of uh, CRL Pocket Rocket who takes 
pole position here around Interlagos with the Ferrari of its heavy in second and Exaresca in the Red Bull rounding out the top three. So it's going to be a Haas Ferrari Red Bull here. One, two, and three to start the race with uh, the Alfa Romeo of Highways in fourth. Um, and it's very, very close. Other than the, uh, the time set by Pocket Rocket, everybody's so close. A little bit further behind when you're looking at the gaps. Houdini in the second Ferrari, rounding out the top five. Then is Kaz, who is um, in sixth at the moment in that Alfa Romeo. Grumpy old Catman, the uh, the first of two Mercedes in seventh. Chunky Corgi in eighth. Uh, the two Renaults now of K-Dog and Capital starring ninth and tenth. They're occupying that fifth row just for themselves. Then the second Mercedes of Porkchops, best of the rest, P11. Uh, J. Stee and a wild maid of the two Williams, 12th and 13th. 14th with C. Freeman in 14th, Snooker in 15th, Racing Ginger in 16th, then you've got Crustier T, Clogmonger, and Team B7 Racing, who did not take part in qualifying here, rounding out the grid. And uh, as we uh, transition our way out of qualifying and over towards the race, I would like to remind everybody of what you are about to witness on your screen in just a few moments. The weather report is in. It is going to be absolutely soaking wet here for the race and uh, for uh, essentially a better part, if not the entirety of the race here around Interlagos. But let's be honest. Would it really be a Brazilian Grand Prix if there wasn't any wet weather? I'm sure uh, Max Verstappen, if he was here, he would be uh, jumping in his seats. Uh, Pocket Rocket, he's looking uh, hes looking like he's uh, fired up and ready to go. Uh, but that could uh, be very costly here for next week as uh, he hits that ready up button, I believe, before the, uh, before the designated host. Uh, so that may or may not be a, uh, a penalty coming up for, uh, for Pocket Rocket there. Uh, but we'll see what the stewards have to say about that. But for us, we are continuing onwards here, jumping right into the action, into the formation lap we go. And uh, it's, like I said, Pocket Rocket leading the way. I could get the tire graphic up, and uh, I'll do it just to give everybody an idea of how wet this is. But uh, there you have it, unsurprisingly, full wet weather tires for every driver as uh, you can see how the rain is falling down. Let's ride on board here with, uh, you know what, let's ride with the uh, Exoresca here. Um, uh, we'll head down the, the grid. You can see the spray. How, uh, how absolutely wonderful that is looking to be in the driver's seat there. Um, uh, very slippy, very, um, uh, very um, uh, un enjoyable conditions to drive in uh, it should be the uh, I guess the way to put it here for the formation lap but uh, this is why they are paid the big bucks these drivers are they can handle this conditions I'm sure there was some practice for a lot of these drivers for the wet weather conditions but of course these wet weather uh, runs uh, could possibly mean uh, the introduction and, uh, well, reintroduction of safety cars here. If drivers uh, go off track, if drivers uh, possibly miss their braking points, you're going to want to tiptoe here around the track, especially for the first few laps, as uh, these full wet tires get up to their optimal uh, operating temperature. It's going to be very, very difficult with these cold, wet tires through the first few laps. And uh, one of the things that I noticed in in my experience here around Interlagos, because I know uh, in my own league race, uh, it was a similar situation of full, wet weather tires for the entirety of the race. I honestly felt like my, uh, my worn, wet weather tires had more grip than the new wet weather tires that I put on when I did take my pit stop. Of course, uh, there is that fall off with the degradation, but um, it's just getting uh, getting the heat in those tires that's going to be so difficult but um, as the drivers line up to the grid I'll uh, I'll get this uh, I'll get this tire graphic off let's uh, let's get the position change up just for the moment uh, the predicted pit stop strategy full wets the entire way and uh, here we go. Once we get our five red lights just awaiting on uh, the final driver to take their position on the grid before we can kick off our 36 laps here around Interlagos. It is the Brazilian Grand Prix Midwest Formula One Division Three Championship round nine here around Interlagos. Up to three lights, four lights, five red lights. 
and the lights are off very quickly and we are racing here as it's a, a very cautious start from a lot of the drivers here as they're heading down towards turn one let's take a look here we'll head down the grid order we've got some side-by-side -side battles going through turn one nearly two wide three wide the two uh, the two Renaults are fighting for position there's wing damage there's a half spin there of a racing point and that's a Williams parked on the track there trying to get out there's the Mercedes of uh, I believe grumpy old Catman getting ahead of capital on your screen there but it is blocked in from K-Dog trying to uh, trying to protect her uh, trying to protect her teammate there but going very wider two of those three cars were watching on the battle there and uh, that is K-Dog still ahead of her uh, ahead of uh, capital but that was pork chops excuse me trying to get through grumpy old Catman's a little bit further ahead so apologies for the confusion on there uh, wasn't able to see the numbers properly with my uh, my grit order doing what it loves to do but uh, crucially team b7 racing already up a couple positions into p16 but uh, getting muscled out of a position by clogmonger there we just saw that down to 17th position as um, it looks like uh, that was, uh, I believe, a while Meta and Crustier T that got involved in that uh, in that spin earlier on. But uh, over in the leaders, Pocket Rocket still leading the way, being chased down by its heavy. What a, a nearly a big moment there, uh, heading towards the start finish straight. That could have been very dangerous if he wasn't careful. Uh, but they are battling it out. Exoresca a little bit further behind, uh, showing Pocket Rocket in fourth, but that is not the case here whatsoever. He is still leading the way. Oh my goodness. That was Houdini having a big moment, but that allows Chunky Corgi to get ahead and Grumpy Old Catman to get ahead here on lap two. But uh, Houdini is going to try to fight back, but unfortunately, due to the pace difference here, just from the uh, from that mistake, he's losing out in a position. That's C Freeman right behind, possibly going to be trying to make a move. C Freeman, though, credit given where credit is due, he's up six positions from the start of the race on one lap. What a lap! from uh, C. Freeman, textbook there for him. J. St. and Guitar Maniac going side by side as uh, that is J. St. getting ahead in the Williams. So Guitar Maniac maybe struggling a little bit as uh, Clogmonger trying to get behind. Highways is uh, getting ahead of Exoresco. We've got a yellow flag here. What, uh, what brought that out? It doesn't look like it's anything too, too crazy, but Exoresco falling down the order here now being pressured by grumpy old Catman. what happened to exoresca you gotta think that maybe he brought out that yellow flag you can see the wing damage on that red bull so a costly mistake through sector two for exoresca might involve an early pit stop earlier than expected but definitely going to be some time lost there for the red bull driver he's staying out on track crucially we've got a yellow flag there is that snooker having a moment on the exit of uh, the uh, the true penultimate corner uh, leading into the actual penultimate corner there off screen but he gets back on track i think that was just a little bit of a tank slapper there here comes grumpy old catman though on exoresca and that is grumpy old catman making the move down the inside exoresca trying to fight back in the red bull but unable to uh, to get the move done going wide though nearly coming back into houdini but he's able to hang on to that position while still going wide through the exit. Uh, Houdini maybe had to slow up a little bit to uh, to not uh, accidentally run into the Red Bull. But this battle is really picking up and Houdini looking to be struggling a tiny little bit too with these wet weather conditions. Just to show how difficult this is, especially in dirty air too when you've got the spray coming right at you. You can barely see. Is he going to move down the inside? No. No, that was uh, Visions nearly of uh, Hamilton and Albon, um, um, I believe uh, two years ago that was now, but um, um, Houdini thinks better of it, has seen that before, and uh, does no want, not want to be on the, uh, on the uh, giving end of that possible incident there will be uh, hanging on. We've got a yellow flag there. Oh no! And that's Chunky Corgi with a big accident a little bit further ahead. And that is going to bring out the safety car here. Let's head down the order. You kind of saw that very briefly on in the distance. It looked like um, uh, I didn't quite see what caused the accident. But Exoresca is out of the race too. What happened to the, uh, what happened to Exoresca? Did he just retire in the pits? What? Why, why is Exoresca out of this race? I mean, I, I understand the frustration of, uh, of getting wing damage, 
but um, uh, but to retire here on lap four when the safety car is out of all uh, of all things that's a um, uh, very questionable there but uh, from running very very well to um, to out of this race entirely uh, under the safety car now we are down to 18 runners as Chunky Corgi crashed out in the very high speed uh, penultimate corner leading in the final corner there right around where that number three is on the mini map there um, uh, that was right around where Chunky Corgi had a moment now what I'm not too sure is uh, if that was uh, just a tank slap or some uh, slip and slide gone wrong or uh, if there was possibly some battling some contact but uh, nonetheless Chunky Corgi out of this race with uh, Exoresca following suit um, um, retiring in the pit lane here so uh, sit rep now Chung uh, not uh, Chunky Corgi Exoresca as I said uh, many times now are out of this race what I was gonna try to say is uh, Pocket Rocket leading the way that gap that he had made and that gap the top three had uh, built are uh, are essentially going to turn into nothing as uh, Pocket Rocket, It's Heavy, and Highways are um, are leading the way. They're going to catch up to the safety car. And you've got a whole gaggle of cars being led by uh, Houdini. That's Houdini, C. Freeman, Kaz, Capital, Pork Chops, J. D. Clogmonger, Racing Ginger, A Wild Meta, Team B7 Racing, Snooker, Guitar Maniac, who's in the pits right now, getting a fresh uh, wing change, and he's putting on a set of intermediate tires. That's uh, an interesting call there from Guitar Maniac. I think um, he might feel like he's got nothing to lose, so might as well try those intermediates. Maybe he feels as if the... Uh, Possibly the uh, the the line, the racing line, if he can stick to that, is dry enough to uh, to make the intermediate tires be the faster tire on the track. I have seen that strategy before, where uh, one or two drivers opt for the intermediates, and uh, just because they're right around the uh, the similar pace as um, as the wets. We'll see how that works out for Guitar Maniac, but I believe the issue is if he's going to want to overtake, he's going to have to get off of that racing line, and that's going to be where uh, those intermediate tires may or may not lose all of that pace. So uh, we'll see how that all plays out, but everybody else opting for a set of full wet tires still. They are uh, sticking with the uh, with the tire choice there. They're going to rely on... Uh, I'm gonna rely on Jeff, on the engineer, to uh, to give them the input. But lap six out of 36 under safety car here. I will be back in just a few moments. Gonna take a quick sip of water and uh, then follow. Hopefully, we can uh, we can take us through the uh, the safety car restart here. Alrighty, I am back, ladies and gentlemen. If you are just joining in, welcome. It is the Brazilian Grand Prix here, round 9 out of 12 for the Midwest Formula 1 Division 3 Championship. We are under safety car after uh, a crash involving Chunky Corgi, a terminal crash for Chunky Corgi, knocking that car out of the race, bringing out the safety car to clean up the uh, the wreckage, clean up the debris, with uh, Exoresca retiring in the pit lane uh, shortly after when that safety car came out but pocket rocket leading the charge here following the safety car was your pole position sitter here after qualifying and has not given up that lead even for a second here so far this race but has the likes of its heavy highways houdini um uh, trying to chase him down the uh, the former two a little bit more than the latter as uh, i know houdini has been uh, 
struggling for grip here on those full wet tires and um, here under safety car this is bringing up a decent point that uh, these uh, wet tires are going to be a, a little bit chilly to say the least they're going to be a little bit cold they're not going to be in that optimal operating temperature here under safety car so uh, once again we might see drivers possibly tiptoeing off of the safety car restart just to uh for the time it takes for them to get enough heat into those tires uh but we'll see how it all plays out but it is pocket rocket in the haas leading the way it's heavy in second highways rounding out the top three here very early on early stages here of this uh, brazilian grand prix but uh, for those possibly hoping that the rain might go somewhere i've uh, i've got bad news for you the rain is not going anywhere it is here to stay it is going to be essentially a full wet race for the entirety of the race possibly we see some intermediate tires uh come on by the end of the session it hasn't stopped the likes of guitar maniac to put them on very early uh so we'll have to keep an eye out on the um on the uh racing point i was about to say the ashton martin but uh, we're not quite there yet uh we'll keep an eye out on the racing point of guitar maniac over the course of this uh, over the course of this race and see how he does on those intermediates but the safety car is coming in at the end of this lap pocket rocket slowing down the field he is um he is essentially going to be leading the charge here under the uh, under the safety car for the restart and as we head towards the line we are just about ready to restart this uh, brazilian grand prix lap eight here we go the power is on and we are heading towards turn one the top two getting a decent start and so did highways for that matter but houdini lurking a little bit further behind and that's going to be c freeman making a move into turn one and it looks like the alpha the alpha tari excuse me makes the overtake he goes up into p4 as houdini still struggling in these full wet weather conditions hasn't looked comfortable through the entirety of the early stages and this is no different here under the restart chase d now chasing down pork chop as snooker getting ahead of team b7 racing um uh, it looks like uh, Crestier T getting ahead of Guitar Maniac. So the two racing points changing positions. Clogmonger and JST going side by side now. As it is going to be Clogmonger. The Alpha Tories are making moves here in the safety car restart. Porkchops, meanwhile, in the Mercedes. He's chasing down very close to Capital under the restart here. But through in this uh, very technical sector too. We might get a little bit of a breather. Maybe not too, too many overtakes happening in this section of the... Uh, of the track here in this section of the race um, uh, but heading in towards the high pace sector three that's when we're going to start seeing possibly more pushing more uh, more ers usage but um, uh, we've got some time penalties falling on the boards highways taking a time second penalty that is going to be added to his time let's ride on board with the mercedes as highways crucially getting ahead what happened it's heavy he's diving into the pits so he might have taken a little bit of wing damage. He's going to lose out on a lot of time here um, uh, with that pit stop, especially um, uh, with the grid so close together on this safety car restart. Capital going a little bit deep through into turn one. That opened the opportunity for Pork Chops. But Pork Chops is uh, being a little bit cautious here in this stage, not having that grip on those tires like he wanted. And this might open the door for Clogmonger, who's looking very comfortable in the wets under the safety car restart. Thought about making a move on Pork Chops, but Pork Chops able to defend his position, able to hang on to that seventh place. Clogmonger is sticking in eighth, but they're both still stuck behind Capital, who is uh, hanging on to that P6 for uh, what feels like dear life. As uh, we are once again into the uh, the technical sector too, um, uh, barring any driver errors, not too much overtaking is going to happen through in this uh, in this section of the track. But of course, um, I, you have seen crazier things before, so anything can happen here around, uh, around Interlagos here in Brazil, especially with the full wet weather conditions. But it looks like the drivers, for the most part, they're getting a hang of this uh, quicker uh, rather than slower, I should, um, I'd like to say. It's looking like, oh no, where did I say that? That's JST having a big moment, sliding. He's in the grass. He's going to have to take a loop-de-loop -loop around to get back on circuit. Gonna have to watch out though now as he's got the racing point guitar maniac and K Dog coming on track here. K Dog, she fell, she fell way down the order here. Not too sure what happened there. She took a, a very early pit stop.
stop. Hang on a minute. Racing Ginger and a Wild Maida are battling it out. Oh no, and what happened there? That was Racing Ginger. I thought he was going to go for a spin. Saves the car, but Grumpy Old Catman is able to get ahead with the uh, with the help of that uh, that mistake. Maybe uh, Grumpy Old Catman might owe oh, Wild Maida a little bit of a, a thank you for that. Clogmonger, a little bit further ahead, took an inside line that didn't quite work out too well for him. It's Porkchops got ahead. Uh, Snooker and Racing Ginger now having a moment, having a battle. But uh, it looks like a Snooker getting ahead as that might have been Racing Ginger. Uh, struggling, having a little bit of a slip and slide. So right as I say, the drivers are getting a hang of this. Um, uh, we're starting to see um, uh, we're starting to see this track show its teeth in the wet weather conditions as uh, drivers are losing the back end. Maybe getting a little bit more confident with the grip but um, uh, it just goes to show how what uh, tricky these uh, this track is in these full wet weather rainy conditions and uh, from the start of the race it does not appear as if these conditions have gotten any better than what they were to start off the uh, to start off the race when we started 11 laps ago but uh, we will be trekking on here. No red flags for weather here in the F1 2020 universe. We race rain or shine, monsoon or not, and uh, cluster T, cluster, crustier T, excuse me, and racing ginger um, had a little bit of a battle. It looks like uh, crustier T getting ahead. But uh, crucially, if I'm looking at the racing points, Guitar Maniac maybe not having that jump that he thought he was going to get here on the intermediate tires. He's uh, in 15th position. He's got K-Dog uh, behind him for um, for good measure, as well as JST and It's Heavy, who are um, who are a little bit further behind. But um, Guitar Maniac, I think maybe was uh, hoping to make a little bit more ground than what he did here. Um, uh, with those intermediates, but unfortunately that is not the case. So it looks as though the uh, the full wet tires are still the optimal tire choice here in this stage of the Grand Prix. But on your screen right now we've got a battle brewing. It's Pork Chops and Capital who are uh, who are still having a battle here. Pork Chops though he was practically pushing Capital around that corner. Thought about going towards the, uh, making a move down the inside, I should say. But unfortunately, Capital once again defending that very well. The, uh, just not enough, uh, straightaway for, uh, Pork Chops to get alongside. But possibly could be a different story down the start finish straight. Riding on board, though, looking at Pork Chops, he doesn't have too much ERS in that tank to work with. He's been using a lot here on the, um, on these uh, on these straights trying to overtake but he might need to conserve a little bit here just to allow himself a better opportunity capital meanwhile he's got half a tank left so uh, he's uh, in a much better position Kaz and Houdini are going side by side They're a little bit further ahead it looks like Kaz getting uh, getting the best of Houdini in this stage of the Grand Prix and that is Kaz who is leading uh, leading that battle for P4 I should say Houdini having a big tank slapper moment there nearly losing the car a nice save by Houdini in that Ferrari um, uh, but it's um, it's all for style points unfortunately uh, but style points don't count towards the uh, the drivers championship he will build, still be getting points but I'm sure he'd much prefer those that, uh, that p4 than a p5 here uh, pork chops right as we take the camera off him going for a move on uh, capital he's going the long way around and he got the overtake done a nice move from pork chops uh, to get uh, to get up into p6 we've got a yellow flag here in sector two I believe that it's heavy who is really not having a race to remember here so far around Interlagos really not feeling it here in the uh, in the full wet conditions he's getting back on track but uh, that gap is going to continue to grow but uh, looking here we've got uh, a big train of cars here that is following um, is being led I should say by pork chop it looks like it's uh, consisting of pork chops capital clogmonger who's going to try to go for a move and a well made up who's uh, right behind uh, right behind the two of them trying to go for that move as well all chasing each other down gonna have to buy their time no DRS here in the uh, the full wet weather conditions no rear wing flat to open up to provide that extra speed on the lead car so it's gonna have to rely on pure pace pure setup driver skill alone but um, uh, we'll see how that plays out a little bit further behind though you've got JSD chasing down Guitar Maniac who for Guitar Maniac 
like I was saying, he's on those intermediates, but he's been uh, falling down the order here. Uh, we've got um, uh, some yellow flags. I believe that's it's heavy diving into the pits, possibly getting a wing changed here on that uh, on that Ferrari. We'll see if he's going to stick it out as a uh, pocket rocket. Uh, just um, just laps him there as uh, he has taken a nice gap here, uh, 6.7 seconds and growing his pocket rocket as uh, he is feeling very comfortable here around Interlagos and uh, he is just driving his own race, doing what he has to do here from the lead and uh, really just uh, running away with it in this stage. But uh, oh, look at this highways. He's getting on the intermediate tires now. So is this going to be the changeover period? Are we going to start seeing more drivers pitting for uh, for intermediate tires? Guitar Maniac doesn't think so. Oh, we got a safety car. Oh, no. What happened here? That looked to be a JC and Guitar Maniac getting involved possibly in an accident. And that is bringing out our second safety car of the evening here on lap 14 out of 36. JST is able to dive into the pits, but it's going to be a lot of time lost. And once again, Pocket Rocket had a great lead here, but uh, will be uh, is essentially uh, losing out on that um, on that lead, I should say, as uh, he's going to have to slow right up and uh, re and uh, let everybody join up on him for that safety car. But uh, it could allow him to make a, a pit stop if he wants to here. Get off of those, uh, get off those, uh, use set of full wets. Maybe put on a fresh set here. There you go. That's exactly what he's gonna do. So we'll see what he's gonna opt for here, um, uh, in his, uh, in his pit lane. See, Freeman, who's now in, uh, second position. He's, uh, following suit. Kaz as well. Houdini. I believe, uh, everybody is, uh, essentially gonna be taking a pit, st uh, pit stop now, uh, through here. And it looks like, uh, intermediate tires for Pocket Rocket. Um, uh, as uh, he is just coming out of the pits. Pork chops, though. Capital, Clogmonger, they're, uh, they're staying out on those full wet tires. And Pork chops, he takes the lead of the race. So, interesting call. JST taking a drive through penalty. But um, as the, uh, the grid is going to sort itself out here um, uh, under the safety car, I will uh, once again be back in just a few moments. Uh, just going to take a, uh, another quick sip of water here now that I've got the time under the, uh, under the safety car here. And then I can uh, take us through the, uh, the grid changes and uh, what we're seeing here on your screen on the track here um, uh, in preparation for our next safety car restart. Alrighty, I am back, ladies and gentlemen. Apologies for that. I was, uh, like I said, taking a quick sip of water, and uh, but we are back now as uh, Pork Chops uh, staying out on his full wet tires, leading the race here under safety car in that Mercedes Pocket Rocket, who has been your leader and uh, essentially runaway leader for the longest time, is in second. He's opted for a set of intermediate tires here as uh, the rain looks to be letting up ever so slightly. Then you've got the likes of Capital, Clogmonger, a Wild Maida, Grumpy Old Catman, Snooker. They all stayed out. They did not pit under safety car. Then behind them, you've got the likes of Houdini, Kaz, 
crustier T C Freeman who uh he pit for a fresh set of wet tires. Uh Team B seven racing, K Dog, J S T Racing Ginger, and it's heavy who pit for a, a fresh set of wet tires. Everybody else who pit opting for a set of intermediate tires though. So uh, an interesting call, some split strategies here from the uh from the grid order. Uh, so we just gotta wait for uh just uh the last few drivers to catch up to the grid before we can um Get back to green flag racing now. Uh, actually, it looks like um, Iways is out of this race. As uh, I was uh, taking my little break, I did see him. I believe he did retire in the pits. Not happy with his uh, with his strategy there. So uh, giving up, uh, forfeiting those points that he would have had there uh, for the um, possibly uh, possibly a P17 uh, at the worst. And uh, he is um, he is out of this race a little bit earlier on. Um, uh, Guitar Maniac uh, getting caught up into an incident. He pit very early for the intermediate tires. Didn't look like the uh, the best decision in hindsight. But uh, of course, it is easy to play captain hindsight when you are looking at hindsight. Uh, not as easy to make that call in the heat of the moment, especially um, uh, in these high pressure situations like the drivers are in um, in this stage of the race. Heading into crunch time now for the uh, for the championship. Um, uh, four rounds to go if we do include this one. This is round nine, so if we count this one, nine, 10, 11, and 12 uh, before the end of the season, which has absolutely flown by up until this point, and I'm sure it will continue. Not too sure of uh, what's going on here in this uh, in this midfield as um, drivers are getting close to one another, uh, maybe having a little bit of fun here. Uh, but hopefully we can see the safety car dive into the pits so we can get back to green flag racing possibly as uh, we are essentially approaching the midway point of this race uh, it's lap 17 the safety car is coming in at the end of this lap so to start lap 18 out of 36 uh, the safety car is coming in we have a rolling start for uh, what is essentially going to be a 25 percent race now uh, as uh, we have just uh, we are going to have just hit the midway point lap 18 now here we go pork chops leading the way we've got some penalties here under the safety car restart drivers staying too close not minding the space biting them in the butt there as um, here we go Pork Chops leading the way. Pocket Rocket got a great start. Heading into turn one, though. It's still going to be Pork Chops into the lead a little bit further behind. We've got uh, cars uh, more or less a single file here uh, going through turn one. A little bit more cautious here, I believe, as a lot of the drivers just not sure how to feel about those intermediate tires as it is a, a new tire. You don't have that data for it here um, in this race. It looks as though um, I believe that might have been a grumpy old cat man getting ahead. See Freeman and Kaz are having a nice little side-by-side -side battle here. They're still going side-by-side, -side, and it's going to be uh, C. Freeman getting ahead. Team B7 Racing getting ahead of Crustier T. So it looks like uh, those wet weather tires are uh, are benefiting the uh, the drivers who stayed on them, maybe a little bit more than the intermediates. Uh, but the question is, how is Pocket Rocket going to handle his as Pork Chops? You saw that there at a bit of a moment. A big tank slapper there on the exit of that corner. So uh, that is uh, definitely going to affect his uh, his lap time there. And time lost to Pocket Rocket, who's now right behind, putting pressure on the Mercedes driver. Maybe we see an overtake heading into turn one here. We're riding on board as Team B7 Racing and Crustier T getting ahead of Kaz. Kaz maybe not having that exit. Ooh, taking a, taking a funky line there. Doesn't want to go towards the inside. Sticking to the outside is Pocket Rocket. It's a drag race into turn one. And as they exit turn one, who's going to who's gonna be in the lead? It is going to be Pocket Rocket by only a hair. Is now leading the race here. Takes the lead right back on those fresh intermediate tires compared to the uh, the more worn wet weather tires that pork chops is um, is rocking right now clogmonger in a distant third watching this battle unfold in front of his very eyes but not too too hard I hope because uh, capital is right behind him putting a lot of pressure there through the exit of that corner and uh, I honestly thought he was gonna go for uh, go for a move there but uh, just the opportunity was not in the uh, was not there for the Renault driver to uh, overtake for that podium position in that stage. 
but it's uh, been a fantastic race here so far. Uh, lots of battles here happening on track. The weather has not um, the weather has not um, dampened anybody's spirits. <laughs> I'm here all week, um, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, it, oh yeah, I gotta say, the racing's been fantastic so far. That's the point. Oh my goodness! But where did I say that? That was a wild meta going for a slip and slide route uh, through that uh, through that corner. Not uh, really working out for him there as he's falling down into P14. Heartbreak for him as he was running very, very well. But that very well could be a sign that those wet weather tires maybe aren't operating the way, uh, the way he would want them anymore. And we could possibly see Meta dive into the pits and put on a fresh set of boots. The question is, if he does do that, which he is, is he going to go full wets again? Or is he possibly going to put on a set of intermediate tires? And uh, unfortunately, that's a speeding in the pit lane penalty to, uh, to add to his troubles um, uh, for a wild meta. Now, on the track, Capital once again chasing down Clogmonger. Grumpy old Catman, though. He is right behind, and uh, he is looking to uh, looking to chase down. Uh, that was uh, Team B7 racing uh, a little bit further behind, uh, struggling on the eggs of that corner, losing out on not one but two positions here in this race as uh, we are on lap 20 out of 36, 16 laps to go here in this Brazilian Grand Prix. So uh, pressure is starting to grow for a lot of these drivers as... Um, as they are pushing a little bit harder than what they have been, getting uh, getting used to the track, getting used to these conditions, and now they feel as if they can uh, they can maybe push these cars a little bit more than what they had been previously. Capital though, he is uh, going side by side now with uh, oh my goodness, that's nearly three wide. As oh my goodness, what is going on there? Battling, jostling for position as much as they can. Clogmonger, he's just trying to get into the pits. Pork chops too, they're just trying to get into the pits and getting involved in that great battle battle there that we saw that was nearly a, that was a big that was a nice little dance there that could have ended much worse if we were not careful um uh, but it did work out very well for uh, for a lot of them as it uh, doesn't look like anybody had any big moments there grumpy old catman though chasing down capital got alongside him actually but just was not able to get the overtake done uh will remain in third kaz and c freeman exchange position so kaz is continuing his charge up the field here he's up in p6 right now and uh, that lead is uh, growing there see freeman that tank slapper is not going to help that might open the door to k-dog another big moment there as uh, k-dog is going to try to go alongside down the inside they touch wheels a little bit. Oh, no. No. And that's C. Freeman going for a spin. Uh, it's very, very unfortunate. We saw the onboard with K-Dog. There was a little bit of elbows out racing between the two drivers trying to hang on to their position. I don't think there was any uh, any wrong intent, wrong doing there from, the, from either one of the drivers. They're just trying to hang on to their position, trying to mind their, uh, their gaps. But unfortunately, uh, that's... Uh, a, a nearly a living definition of a racing incident in my uh, in my books, or at least in my opinion. Both drivers battling hard there for that position, and sometimes accidents do happen. But uh, the stewards might take a look at that, depending on uh, how the reports turn out, and we'll see how that goes. But unfortunately, though, for uh, for I believe that C Freeman, it's getting from bad to worse for him as uh, he is falling down the order. Had a moment through the uh, through that penultimate corner to start sector three, or the um, uh, my version of the penultimate corner, the uh, penultimate to the penultimate corner, I should say, the second to last corner. Uh, but gets back on track now. But we've got a big train of cars here that uh, we're riding on board with Kaz. They're all essentially following along. It looks like grumpy old Catman. You've got Snooker, Houdini, and Kaz. Essentially, you could throw a blanket on all these three cars. I'm sure uh, most of them would prefer a towel at this point, but um, uh, a blanket works too, I would think. But you could cover those cars with a blanket. You could cover those cars with a towel. They were so close together through Sector 2. But um, uh, crucially, no overtaking. Oh, no, but where did I say that? That was Snooker having a big moment. He went for a bit of a half spin, getting back on track. Grumpy old Catman losing out on a lot of time too. Houdini now finds himself in third. Kaz in fourth. Crust your T in fifth as he nearly went into the... Uh, into the grass grumpy old catman that's a sign that his wet weather tires are over and done with i'm surprised capitalist stayed out for as long as he has on those uh, on that set of tires that he has um uh, but um 
it's working out for him, it seems. Uh, but we'll see how it's going to play out here as this race continues onwards. Uh, we are lap 23 out of 36. 13 laps and counting to go. Pocket Rocket with a very comfortable lead of this race. He's making those intermediate tires work a darn treat for him. Snooker taking a pit stop finally after 21 lap old medium, uh, 21 lap old full wet tires, 22 lap old. He's putting on a set of intermediates as uh, these conditions are getting better now um, uh, compared to where they were at the start of the race. They have been for quite some time. But uh, definitely the case now, not nearly as much spray, there's not nearly as much standing water, and the racing line is definitely present here as uh, Pocket Rocket uh, flexing just that, uh, so to say, with that fastest lap of the Grand Prix. He's got that purple track there, as you saw. He is absolutely flying here around Brazil. He came to race and uh, has driven a uh, essentially a perfect race here so far as the capital taking that pit stop and uh, the likes of Houdini and Kaz have been unleashed now um, uh, to uh, to chase down Pocket Rocket. But we'll see how it all plays out here on uh, laps 24 out of 36. A lot of these drivers are starting. Uh, pork chops on your screen right now as we're riding on board, chasing down Racing Ginger. Uh, the gap is close. The gap is even closer between Kaz and Houdini as uh, they are uh, they are chasing. Uh, they are both trying to chase down Pocket Rocket, but having a little bit of a battle themselves. And even Crustier T, he's not out of this battle either. He's uh, really uh, he's really in there, and uh, he could very well possibly make a fight for this podium uh, if uh, if he plays his cards right, and uh, possibly a mistake from uh, Houdini and Kaz. Um, uh, we'll see how uh, all that goes uh, between now and the end of the race. Pork Chops, though, meanwhile, he is uh, now right behind Racing Ginger. He's going to try for an overtake through this Sector 2. Going down the inside goes the Mercedes driver, and he does get the overtake done. That's Pork Chops in the Mercedes up to P6 right now on those fresh intermediate tires. He is um, having a race here, and he's chasing down k Dog. K-Dog, she's going to try to hang on to that uh, that P5, that top 5 position. But um, given the way Pork Chops has been looking as of late, it's going to be a very difficult um, task, to say the least. Especially now that uh, Pork Chops has a, a, a slightly revamped battery now. Um, uh, not nearly as empty as it was. And you can see, already closed that gap up to nearly half a second and counting is the Mercedes driver, so we'll keep an eye out on this battle as it plays out. k Dog using a lot of uh, ERS, it seems, to uh, to try to hang on to that P5, but you gotta be, uh, you gotta conserve some of that battery in case the overtake does happen, so you can fight back. Uh, but uh, these are essentially the two big battles we have: Kaz and Houdini, as well as uh, Pork Chops and k Dog. But now Clogmonger and Racing Ginger might be getting involved in a little something, something here. Um, uh, a little bit further behind the uh, the likes of Pork Chops and K-Dog as uh, Racing Ginger losing out on a little bit of pace in this uh, in this stage. I think those uh, eight lap old intermediate tires, I don't think they're falling off, but I think it's just showing the um, these drivers with the fresher sets of, uh, with that fresher set of tires just uh, having a little bit more of a pace advantage here uh, for the most part, generally speaking, compared to those who uh, put on the intermediates under the safety car, but we'll see how this all plays out between now and the end of the race. Ten laps to go in this Grand Prix. k Dog is diving into the pits here as uh, Pork Chops gets ahead. Crestier T also taking a pit stop, so uh, they're both going to get off the set of intermediates and put on a fresh set here to go to the end of the race. They're feeling as if the uh, the fresh set might be the uh, the optimal strategy. Uh, might be able to go much faster on that fresh set than to try to hang on for 10 more laps on the uh, on the intermediate tires that they had on uh, they had put on under the safety car. So we'll see how that strategy plays out. Clogmonger, he's going to try to go down the outside of Racing Ginger. Nearly had that breaking point. But the second effort is there for Clogmonger. He goes a little bit wide, but he makes the move work for him. That's Clogmonger up into top, up into a top five now. Now he's got to chase down Pork Chop. You can see him there in the distance there through this slow technical sector two. But um, he's going to have to really close that gap here 
Porkchop's trying to hang on to that P4. He might want to chase down uh, possibly for a podium and hope for uh, hope for a possible accident if uh, if something does happen. But uh, Porkchop's is going to have his work cut out for him. Uh, while well, equally having to watch out for Clogmonger, who's starting to put a push on now as he's got some clean air in front of him. Doesn't have to worry about uh, some battles. All he has to do is focus on trying to chase down the driver ahead. Uh, but crucially for this podium battle, it's still uh, Houdini leading Kaz for uh, P2 and P3. Racing Ginger is uh, diving into the pits himself. He's going to get off of that set of intermediate tires. He wants to get on a fresh set of, uh, of intermediates to go to the end of the race. The rain is still falling here as I'm riding on board with Kaz chasing down Houdini, as you can see on your screen here. But um, it looks like it is letting up more and more as the laps continue onwards. I don't think we're going to see any dry tire running unless uh, things really take a dramatic shift. Uh, but I do think uh, the intermediate tires are definitely uh, well past the uh, the optimal strategy and uh, the drivers are uh, showing exactly why with uh, everybody on those intermediates now. Uh, there was some yellow flags, a position change. I think that might have been a mistake from somebody down in the midfield um, um, trying to get used to those uh, trying to get used to those fresh set of intermediate tires, maybe chasing down. Uh, but uh, nothing to be too too alarmed of as that yellow flag got cleaned up uh, very uh, very quickly just as quickly as it came out but uh, we still are monitoring this battle for P2 and P3 it's heavy though is um, uh, it looks like uh, is right behind the two uh, not gonna get too too involved with that battle as he is a lap down but he is there uh, possibly for support on his teammate uh, maybe uh, maybe give a little bit of pressure to Kaz who um, may or may not be aware that that Ferrari is a lapped car uh, but that could very well be uh, that extra pressure uh, that uh, that the Ferrari people uh, the Ferrari people <laughs> the Ferrari drivers need in order to uh, hang on to that P2 and just make Kaz think just enough here um, um, on uh, on if he wants to go for that overtake but Elsewhere on the track, Grumpy Old Catman chasing down Capital. They're both on fresher sets of tires here. Pocket Rocket, I just realized, took a pit stop to put on a fresh set of intermediates. So it looks like the optimal strategy very much so is to do the um, to take that uh, extra pit stop once you got on that initial set of uh, intermediate tires to put on that fresh set of boots and uh, go much faster to the end of the race. But here the laps are dwinding down eight laps to go nearly seven laps to go in this Grand Prix here as uh, it is lap 29 out of 36 some yellow flags there as it is the Ferrari that was it's heavy who he's finally had enough he's retired out of this race giving uh, giving up on these points and that's gonna bring out a safety car a very late safety car here and that is um, very much so gonna shake things up here for the end of the race we are gonna have a sprint to the finish here oh my goodness I can't believe this the safety car is coming out on lap 29 out of 36 we're gonna have possibly a uh, two to three laps here under the safety car before we head back to green flag racing um, I will enjoy this because it's going to allow me to take a, a, a quick sip of water here um, uh, between now and the restart. But for the likes of Pocket Rocket, Houdini, Kaz, they all had that uh, that nice uh, that nice little cushion, that nice gap. That's essentially all for naught. And now you're, you're seeing the likes of Pork Chops, Clogmonger even, uh, they're now getting involved. But this late in the race, forget the tire strategy. Let's take a look here. Clogmonger with eight seconds of penalties, Capital with three, Pocket Rocket with three, so he is going to have to book it, his Pocket Rocket, off of this safety car restart, and he is not, I'm sure he's probably not very happy with that safety car coming out when it did, as uh, it was his race to lose uh, here around uh, around the uh, around this circuit, as um, um, he's uh, the Girid is going to be closed right back up, and uh, like I said, as this happens, I'm going to take a quick sip of water and uh, I will be back in uh, just a few moments to take us through the restart, take us through possibly uh, what is um, how this is all going to play out between now and the end of the, uh, the Grand Prix.
Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, I am back here today. Well, not back here today. I'm back here every week to uh, to take us through the racing action. But I am back from my uh, my little water break, my little pit stop break. We are under safety car here, as it uh, looks like a wild meta. He's gonna try to uh, he's gonna try to unlap himself. Uh, that could be. Um, hopefully, he doesn't get disqualified for uh, for overtaking the safety car. But um, it looks like he's just gonna go. He's gonna do his best to try to get back on the lead lap. And uh, at this point, you've got nothing. Uh, you've got nothing to lose. Might as well give it a shot. See what you can do here. But Pocket Rocket is leading the way here under the safety car. Houdini is in second. Kaz is in third. And uh, that is the uh, the cue for the safety car here on lap 31 out of 36. Now, um, uh, for those who uh, for those who are curious, for those who uh, maybe maybe the racers who have the uh, the stream open, who want a little bit of a a sit rep, I don't do this often, so uh, don't expect this to be uh, don't expect this to happen too too much. But uh, being a Canadian myself, um, uh, hockey is essentially in my blood, so I feel uh, it's only right if I do update the folks, uh, everybody watching at home who uh, took time out of the day to tune into the stream to inform you all that uh, the uh, Montreal Canadiens and Vegas Golden Knights have uh, gone into overtime in uh, in game six of their uh, their third round uh, their third round matchup here uh, if Montreal wins they do move on to the finals uh, but of course I'm not inviting you all to tune away from the stream I'm just giving you all an update here of what is going on it's an intermission anyway so you're not gonna see anything exciting if you tune in now but if you stay with us you're gonna see um, you're gonna see something very exciting it's going to be a uh, essentially a five lap sprint to the finish a four lap sprint to the finish now uh, to the end of the race here in these intermediate tire conditions uh, for the uh, for the win here in the Brazilian Grand Prix we're just awaiting for the final few cars to catch up to the grid but uh, they're gonna want to do it sooner rather than later or they might risk running out of time because the safety car possibly either at the end of this lap or at the end of next lap is going to be forced to dive into the pits whether the drivers wanted to or not uh, pocket rocket he's probably hoping for to dive in at the end of this lap so that he can uh, so that he can try to have as much time as possible to grow his uh, to grow his lead try to build a three second gap between he and Houdini to snag the maximum amount of points for his drivers championship for his constructors uh, championship team as well as well as the combined constructors uh, but it's all to play for here on round 9 out of 12. Uh, very exciting scenes that are going to happen very, very shortly here. As it looks like it, just about everybody other than uh, C. Freeman and a Wild Meta have caught up to the grid. But uh, C. Freeman is essentially caught up right now. Uh, essentially, so we just need a uh, Maida to catch right back up. Uh, the question is, will the safety car come in at the end of this lap, or is he going to do one more to allow Maida the opportunity? No, he will be coming in, so we are going to have a three-lap sprint to the finish line here. Maida taking another penalty for uh, multiple warnings. That's going to be added on to his time, but Pocket Rocket, he's going to have to play this uh, perfectly here under the safety car restart for the final time here uh, we hope will be a safety car restart as now he puts the pedal to the metal accelerating towards the line to start lap 33 out of 36 we are going to green flag racing for a three lap shootout into turn one we go looking to be a, a relatively clean start from everybody as uh, they all charge down towards turn one here we go, it is the sprint to the end as um, it looks like we've got Clogmonger putting a lot of pressure on Crustier T, Team B7 Racing losing out on two positions under that restart. He is not having a good restart there on those colder tires. Here comes Clogmonger, he thought about making a move down the inside of Crustier T but just was not able to, uh, to get the overtake done in time. Grumpy old Catman, meanwhile, he's chasing down Capital and might have an opportunity to get an overtake done here. Maybe snag that P4, chase down the likes of uh, Kaz and Houdini. Pocket Rocket, meanwhile, he's gotten away pretty cleanly. That gap is up to 2.2 seconds, but uh, he's going to have to grow one more second here between the next uh, two and a half 
laps while also making sure he remains clean. Uh, Capital, he's got a three second penalty as well, so he's going to have to get a move on unless uh, he wants to risk falling down a few positions in the order. But he's got both Mercedes drivers of Grumpy Old Catman and Pork Chops to, for company to chase him down. And the likes of uh, Cruster T and Clogmonger, who have now caught up to that train, or re caught up to that train, I should say. But they're having their own battle here. Here comes Clogmonger. We've got a yellow flag as Racing Ginger is out of this race. But that is not going to bring out a safety car. There's contact now between Clogmonger and Crustier T. They're going side by side now. But Crustier T getting ahead. A little bit of a front wing top and rear diffuser there. As Crustier T shutting down the uh, any opportunity for a, uh, a switchback uh, move. See Freeman and Team B7 Racing having a nice little side-by-side -side battle for the wooden spoon here as the C Freeman is uh, under AI, it seems. So Team B7 getting ahead, but C Freeman trying for a nice little switchback, unable to get that to work, though. Uh, nothing wrong with uh, nothing wrong with that. Some hard racing all around, but Clogmonger is still stuck behind Crestier T. That mistake, though, is not going to help. Pocket Rocket, he's done his part of the work he's built that gap to nearly four seconds now here on lap 34 out of 36 the question is can he keep this uh, can he keep it clean for the final few laps and solidify that victory we will find out here very shortly capital um uh, going a little bit wide on the exit that might allow grumpy old Catman to get a run to get a possible overtake who a bit of a moment there for the Mercedes driver, that's going to be a little bit of a time loss as uh, they're still chasing down. They're essentially uh, sticking with one another, but uh, that is not going to be an overtake. But crucially, Pork Chops now gets ahead. As you saw, Grumpy Old Catman going very deep into turn one. We are on the penultimate lap of the Grand Prix, lap 35 out of 36 here today. Pocket Rocket leading the charge. Houdini in second, Kaz in third. They're just following suit with one another, hoping to hang on for a, a lap and a half here, a lap and two thirds and counting. Capital though, he's trying to hang on for dear life, but he needs to uh, he needs to limit the damage here. He's got to be perfect because Pork Chops is now chasing after him. But uh, the question is, can they grow enough of a gap to maybe uh, only lose out on one position rather than losing out on two or three for Capital? But we'll see how this plays out. Pork Chops, though, he's putting so much pressure on the Renault driver. Uh, but can he get the overtake done on track? You know that's definitely going to help with the... Uh, that's going to feel good if he does get the overtake done on track. Heading towards the, uh, the final few corners now of lap 35, the leader... Pocket Rocket has to do one more lap here around this circuit before he can breathe easy. Here we go, lap 36 out of 36 of the Grand Prix here today. Let's see how this is all going to play out for the uh, for the podium, for the victory here. Pocket Rocket leading the way as uh, he's uh, maneuvering those corners with perfection. Houdini, Kaz is now chasing down Houdini. He's going deep. He went very wide, almost trying for an overtake. Thankfully, there's no penalty there for him, as that could have been a little bit costly. Um, uh, with the uh, capital and pork chops, you still got to keep it clean, stay on that podium. But pork chops, he's chasing down capital as much as he can. Is he gonna try a lunge? There's a little bit of contact there between the two drivers, as um, um, as the front wing taps the rear diffuser. But um, thankfully, there's no damage. They continue onwards with the race. The time is running out on the opportunity to overtake fantastic helicopter shot there of the action as uh, you see capital in the Renault pork chops in the Mercedes right behind the second Mercedes of grumpy old Catman but further ahead here he is the winner of the Brazilian Grand Prix pocket rocket crosses the line and he takes the victory driving a master class drive here with Houdini and Kaz taking P2 P3 taking the podium Pork Chops, Grumpy Old Catman, the two Mercedes, P4, P5, Crustier T in 6, and uh, Capital falls way down to 7, so that 3 second time penalty really bit him with that safety car, not ideal too, too much for him, but um, it was still a solid drive for the Renault driver as uh, Crustier T, 65, gets driver of the day, but what a race that was here today. 
fantastic drive there from Pocket Rocket as uh, he definitely uh, comes back here after the uh, the disappointing Australian Grand Prix and drives a masterclass drive in the wet weather tires in the intermediate tire conditions he is your winner here in Brazil but um, uh, for the uh, the entire podium it was a great drive from them uh, here today all throughout fantastic showing and uh, we'll see uh, if we can get the uh, the interviews in here uh, but one more time through the grid it is pocket rocket taking the victory here from Paul Houdini and Kaz your uh, podium sitters with uh, pork chops and grumpy old catman rounding out the top five crustier T capital K dog clogmonger snooker rounding out the top ten with JSD Team B7 Racing, a Wild Meta, C Freeman Racing Ginger rounding out the top 15. It's Heavy, Highways, Guitar Maniac, and uh, Exoresca and Chunky Corgi rounding out the uh, the back portion of the grid. But there you have it. That has been the Brazilian Grand Prix. Fantastic race here today from uh, from everybody, and uh, we will get the uh, we will see if we can get some thoughts from the uh, from the podium sitters here. I will uh, I will get the invite sent off, and uh, I will be back in just a moment, and uh, we'll get some insight. Alrighty, I've got the invites sent off, and uh, once we get uh, once we get them in, we'll uh, we'll get some thoughts on that race. Get uh, a little bit of driver input there. I'll just take a moment and uh, jump into the showroom here, um, uh, so we can get that. And we have our second place finisher, Houdini, who just jumped in. Houdini, uh, can you hear us at all? Yes, I can. How's how's it going? I'm doing fantastic. How about yourself? How are you doing? Yeah, excited about the uh, P2 with the uh, wet weather. Uh, it was not what I was looking for. I was doing the anti-precipitation rain dance before the race, <laughs> and uh, that did not uh, work today. <laughs> yeah, and that was something uh, I wanted to ask. Uh, firstly, if you were, if you were, pre were you prepared at all for the uh, for this possible wet weather, knowing that it is Brazil, or did you just go in, do some dry practice, hope for dry, and uh, sort of have your heart broken when you saw the uh, the weather report? So I'll say first, my heart definitely was broken. However, uh, I did uh, have a, at least a little bit of, uh, of rain practice and, you know, full wet and a little bit of inters as well. And uh, so when I qualified, I was running a higher downforce wet setup uh, and I was ready for it, knowing that it was going to happen. I was hoping, by the way, that at the end we could maybe go wet to and stretch those out and go to softs or something at the end and maybe a dry tire. But that was definitely not in the cards today. So, uh, so yeah, I wasn't surprised by it. I, I didn't welcome it myself, but uh, you know, it is what it is, and you gotta make the best of it. That's great. So, uh, that's awesome. But uh, I mean, there was that late safety car that I do want to ask uh, you because it looked like um, for you guys in the top three, you kind of, you guys kind of just were running your own race. Uh, Pocket Rocket, I'll be honest, was kind of off in no man's land for a better oh, part yeah, he there. Was killing it. But he was uh, killing when, it. when that late safety car came out, did the did the thought cross your mind of uh, possibly I I should maybe go for this? I should maybe go for the for the win? Or were you content with uh, where you were and just focusing a little bit more on uh, Kaz, who was behind you there? Yeah, I was focusing on my race. I thought P2 was what was uh, possible today, uh, you know, with everybody's pace and the conditions. Uh, I did think about pitting on the safety car, even the second lap of the safety car, because Kaz was right behind me, and he had the opportunity to say, 
well, I can do the opposite to what I did. And if I were him, I probably would have. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so I, I definitely thought about it. My insurance were at about 30% when that late safety car came out. Uh, and I did see that, uh, uh, that the guy in first was, uh, did pit, uh, CRL. And, uh, so it was like, well, you know, he, he has the opportunity, the luxury to do that. I wanted to race Kaz knowing that he would probably race me. So I was content to stay out on the tires, but I, I didn't think P1 was in the cards unless he got a lot more penalties, which he did not. So. <laughs> okay. okay. I mean, it was still a fantastic drive. Now, after this, uh, I mean, after those, um, I mean, after the race today, excuse me. And with your, uh, with the season you've been having here, uh, how confident are you going into the final few rounds uh, with uh, where you are so far this season? Well, it's definitely been good. My, I had a few first of the races that I didn't do quite as well, and that was on you know driver error, just race pace, you know not being where I wanted it to be. But my my thought, you know, going forward is being as consistent as I can with the, uh, you know, trying to get on podiums. And my goal today was be on the podium and don't spin out or you know, do something stupid in the wet. So both of those goals were met and the points will fall where they are. Uh, I know that both Red Bulls, uh, VTech and uh, young DJ CJ are up in D2. I don't know how they've done yet. I haven't seen any postings. Um, so they have the potential to come in with some good points. Um, we'll see where that lies, but you know, I did what I needed to do today, which was, you know, don't, you know, don't race where you don't need to. There was a, an almost incident. I don't know if you saw it into turn one early on and I kind of dropped back a little bit early on. But mm -hmm. the you could see that uh, like I, I wasn't trying to race anybody. I was trying to race my race and keep it clean, knowing that it would come back. And it, it did in a very good way. So I didn't think P1 was in the cards today, but P2 was definitely where I wanted to be, uh, and, you know, uh, thankful and happy to be there. Oh, yeah. And that's uh, I mean, you took the words right out of my mouth when you said did what you had to do. Uh, but congratulations on the podium. Congratulations on the Hall of Points, and uh, I'm sure uh, I'm sure it won't be the last time we'll see you here in the uh, in the booth post race uh, between now and the end of the season. But congratulations. Appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Now, uh, from what I'm seeing, it doesn't appear as if anybody else has uh, jumped into the uh, the commentator's booth. And uh, I'll be honest, I'm not going to say I'm uh, too, too disappointed because it looks like uh, overtime has uh, just started. So I'm going to wrap up the stream here. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I do hope you enjoyed the racing action. Uh, make sure to tune in same time, same place next week for round 10 of the, the championship. And if this one was anything to go by, it is going to be a fantastic race. You will not want to miss that. But until then, on behalf of everybody here at Midwest Formula One, Thank you so much for watching and have yourselves a fantastic evening.